Thanks, Lisa. Today marks Deputy Mayor Jennifer McKelvey's last day in the city's top office. So let's listen live. She's making remarks here. Here we go. Impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. In late March, during the transition period, we were able to secure $235 million in provincial funding for our COVID-19 shortfall. However, a funding shortfall of 395 point. $3 million remains for 2022 because the federal government did not match the provincial contribution. The capital variance report for 2022 before committee this morning recommends removing $300 million from our capital plan and makes a one-time draw of $95 million from the COVID-19 reserve backstop to manage the shortfall. The COVID-19 backstop will now be reduced to $1.039 billion, which is sufficient to manage the 2023 budgeted COVID-19 impacts. However, without additional provincial and federal support, difficult decisions will need to be made for 2024. We continue to collaborate with our provincial and our federal colleagues on this and many other issues. I love this city. And four months ago, my role serving Toronto changed. The business of the city continued. And together, during my tenure in the office of the mayor, City Council has dealt with 530 items over the last 144 days. I am proud of the work I have done with my council colleagues to advance key priorities like housing and transit safety. Together, we approved the Housing Action Plan and committed to achieving at least 285,000 homes by 2031, and we extended exclusionary zoning. This will allow low-rise housing with two, three, or four homes in one building in all neighbourhoods across Toronto. We worked with the TTC, city staff, and Toronto Police to track the implementation of investments the city is making to increase safety in the transit system and support people in crisis. The effectiveness of these initiatives is now publicly available and can be tracked using the new Community Safety and Wellbeing Transit Dashboard. I was proud to host the city's Mental Health Roundtable to bring together political, community, emergency response, and healthcare leaders to discuss the challenges Torontonians face and to advocate for further investment by our provincial and federal partners. And personally, while I was always dedicated to my community and will always remain so to my community of Scarborough Rouge Park, I am so thankful that I have been able to meet Toronto residents across the city at more than 120 events in all 25 wards. I can safely say that Toronto has so many wonderful neighbourhoods to explore and we have the most welcoming and supportive residents. I'd like to thank the residents of Toronto for their support over the last four months, in addition to that of my council colleagues, city staff and of course my family and my friends. It has been a true honour to serve and lead the city in this way. I wish Mayor Chow all the best as she takes office, and I look forward to continuing to serve the people of Toronto. And with that, I'm happy to answer questions for the last time in this room. Deputy Mayor, you talked about um, public safety and um, investments in the time that you've been in this role. Well, when you came into this role, you had to the ground running. Violence on the TTC was a big issue. Unfortunately, this week, we're talking a lot about violence in our city. How do you feel you've been able to handle that situation and the issues that Torontonians don't feel safe over these past couple of months. So I will say the most heartbreaking part of this job is the morning phone calls that you get from the fire chief saying that there's been a fatality or the calls you get from the police chief saying that an innocent bystander in the city has been murdered. Um, we need to continue to invest in safety. We've started to make those investments this year. We did invest in Toronto Police. We invested in uh, the multidisciplinary multidisciplinary outreach teams on the TTC, um, more streets to homes workers, but we do know we have a long way to go. And uh, every time it is heartbreaking, every time we are horrified. And as a council, we need to continue to work together to continue to make those investments and to turn the dial. And can you just expand on how the incoming mayor now will have to inherit this and this difficult challenge of keeping the city safe now moving forward is her responsibility? 
Well, it's not just her responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility on council. And we have seen over the last four months that our council colleagues can come together to find consensus, to make hard decisions, and to move forward. Um, so while, yes, this is a, a responsibility of, of Mayor Olivia Chow, it's, it's everyone's responsibility. And uh, we need to support her in that effort. Um, when you were first given this role, you, you did make it clear that it wasn't one that you wanted. How are you really feeling now on your last day? I'm looking forward to vacation at the end of the month. Um, look, I'm going to miss seeing uh, residents across Toronto, but I am really looking forward to serving my community of, of Scarborough Rouge Park 100% of the time. That's what I signed up to do, and that's why I didn't run for mayor. Do you think there's any chance you would ever run again? Are you inspired at all by this experience? I am thinking about getting through the next year, and uh, that, that's about it. And I'm really looking forward to working with the new mayor and uh, my council colleagues to continue to advance housing, transit safety, all those things that are important to Toronto residents. With regard to working with the next mayor, what has the transition been like? What have you been doing behind the scenes since the elections? So uh, behind the scenes, I've had several meetings with uh, Mayor-elect Olivia Chow. And there were several meetings of the staff in the office of the mayor with her new staff that are coming in. Um, so uh, those have been wonderful meetings that I've had with her. Um, she has lots of ideas. I look forward to hearing those ideas. I look forward, forward for us to finding ways that we can work together for this great city. Well, let's go. This is the okay, end of the Okay, there era. we have it's, it. Deputy uh, Mayor Jennifer McKelvey delivering kind of her final uh, remarks and taking questions from reporters on her last day in office at City Hall, uh, saying that when she took over suddenly four months ago, uh, she really, uh, this is not a job that she exactly wanted, but that at City Council they passed over or talked about over 530 items over 144 days. Mm -hmm. She attended well over 100 events in 25 different wards, but she's really looking forward to getting back to focusing on her region of Scarborough Rouge Park. Yeah, she'll be back as the council there, of course, taking over for John Tory after that sudden resignation back in February. Seems so long ago now, but here we are. As tomorrow, Olivia Chow will be sworn in as Toronto's next mayor.